Hudu Mountain. Hudu Mountain, also sometimes referred to as Hudu Volcano, is a potentially active stratovolcano in the northern interior of British Columbia, Canada. It is located 25 kilometers, 16 miles, northeast of the Alaska-British Columbia border on the north side of the Iskut River opposite of the mouth of the Craig River. With a summit elevation of 1,850 meters, 6,070 feet, and a topographic prominence of 900 meters, 3,000 feet, Hudu Mountain is one of many prominent peaks within the boundary ranges of the Coast Mountains. Its flat top summit is covered by an ice cap more than 100 meters, 330 feet, thick and at least 3 kilometers, 1.9 miles, in diameter. Two valley glaciers surrounding the northwestern and northeastern sides of the mountain have retreated significantly over the last hundred years. They both originate from a large ice field to the north and are the sources of two meltwater streams. These streams flow along the western and eastern sides of the volcano before draining into the Iskut River. Much of Hudu Mountain was formed beneath glacial ice and it has been overlain by glaciers or an ice cap throughout much of its history. The primary rock types composing the volcano are phonolite and trachyte, which were deposited during six periods of eruptive activity beginning about 85,000 years ago. Most of these eruptive periods were characterized by steady flows of lava, but at least one period of explosive activity occurred as indicated by the presence of pyroclastic rocks. The latest eruptive period began about 10,000 years ago with the eruption of extensive lava flows that cover the north-central, northwestern and southeastern mountain slopes. A lava flow covering the southwestern slope may have been produced by a more recent eruption within the last couple of hundred years. Although no historical eruptions are known at Hudu Mountain, there have been periods of seismic activity since at least the mid-1980s, indicating possible future eruptions and volcanic hazards. Hudu Mountain lies in a remote area of Cassier Land District that has undergone mineral exploration since at least the early 1900s. This exploration led to the discovery of copper, silver and gold within the Iskut River floodplain where two underground mines operated between 1988 and 1999. Geological studies have been conducted at Hudu Mountain since at least the 1940s, with the most detailed studies having occurred in the 1990s and 2000s. The area has a mostly cool and wet climate with heavy precipitation. As a result, a limited number of mammals live around Hudu Mountain. Trees of the pine and willow families form forests in the regional river valleys and on the lower slopes of the volcano. They compose one of many ecoregions that occur throughout British Columbia. Due to its remoteness, Hudu Mountain can only be accessed by air, by water or by trekking great distances on foot. The closest communities are more than 30 kilometers, 19 miles, away from the mountain. Geography Biogeography Hudu Mountain lies within the Boundary Ranges ecoregion, a mountainous region of the Coast Mountains in southeastern Alaska and northwestern British Columbia characterized by rugged, largely ice-capped mountains of granitic and metamorphic rocks. Mountain Hemlock Western hemlock and Sitka spruce form forests on valley bottoms and lower valley slopes. They are overlooked by an extensive alpine tundra zone consisting primarily of large ice fields, glaciers and barren rock. Several large river valleys with wide braided channels penetrate the boundary ranges ecoregion, with black cottonwood occurring on their floodplains. A limited number of mammal species thrive in this ecoregion, such as hoary marmots and mountain goats, which inhabit the alpine tundra zone. The Boundary Ranges ecoregion is bounded on the south and southeast by the Nas Ranges and Skeena Mountains ecoregions, on the north and east by the Yukon Stikine Highlands ecoregion and on the west by the Pacific Ocean. It is part of the Coast and Mountains ecoprovince which forms part of the Humid Maritime and Highlands ecodivision. Hudu Mountain Hudu Mountain also sometimes referred to as Hudu Volcano, is a potentially active stratovolcano in the northern interior of British Columbia, Canada. It is located 25 kilometers, 16 miles, northeast of the Alaska-British Columbia border on the north side of the Iskut River opposite of the mouth of the Craig River. With a summit elevation of 1,850 meters, 6,070 feet, and a topographic prominence of 900 meters, 3,000 feet, Hudu Mountain is one of many prominent peaks within the boundary ranges of the Coast Mountains. Its flat top summit is covered by an ice cap more than 100 meters, 330 feet, thick and at least 3 kilometers, 1.9 miles, in diameter. Two valley glaciers surrounding the northwestern and northeastern sides of the mountain have retreated significantly over the last hundred years. They both originate from a large ice field to the north and are the sources of two meltwater streams. These streams flow along the western and eastern sides of the volcano before draining into the Iskut River. 
Much of Hoodoo Mountain was formed beneath glacial ice and it has been overlain by glaciers or an ice cap throughout much of its history. The primary rock types composing the volcano are phonolite and trachyte, which were deposited during six periods of eruptive activity beginning about 85,000 years ago. Most of these eruptive periods were characterized by steady flows of lava, but at least one period of explosive activity occurred as indicated by the presence of pyroclastic rocks. The latest eruptive period began about 10,000 years ago with the eruption of extensive lava flows that cover the north-central, northwestern and southeastern mountain slopes. A lava flow covering the southwestern slope may have been produced by a more recent eruption within the last couple of hundred years. Although no historical eruptions are known at Hoodoo Mountain, there have been periods of seismic activity since at least the mid-1980s, indicating possible future eruptions and volcanic hazards. Hoodoo Mountain lies in a remote area of Cassier Land District that has undergone mineral exploration since at least the early 1900s. This exploration led to the discovery of copper, silver and gold within the Iskut River floodplain where two underground mines operated between 1988 and 1999. Geological studies have been conducted at Hoodoo Mountain since at least the 1940s, with the most detailed studies having occurred in the 1990s and 2000s. The area has a mostly cool and wet climate with heavy precipitation. As a result, a limited number of mammals live around Hoodoo Mountain. Trees of the pine and willow families form forests in the regional river valleys and on the lower slopes of the volcano. They compose one of many ecoregions that occur throughout British Columbia. Due to its remoteness, Hoodoo Mountain can only be accessed by air, by water or by trekking great distances on foot. The closest communities are more than 30 kilometers, 19 miles, away from the mountain. Geography Biogeography Hoodoo Mountain lies within the Boundary Ranges ecoregion, a mountainous region of the Coast Mountains in southeastern Alaska and northwestern British Columbia characterized by rugged, largely ice-capped mountains of granitic and metamorphic rocks. Mountain Hemlock Western Hemlock and Sitka Spruce form forests on valley bottoms and lower valley slopes. They are overlooked by an extensive alpine tundra zone consisting primarily of large ice fields, glaciers and barren rock. Several large river valleys with wide braided channels penetrate the boundary ranges ecoregion, with black cottonwood occurring on their floodplains. A limited number of mammal species thrive in this ecoregion, such as hoary marmots and mountain goats, which inhabit the alpine tundra zone. The Boundary Ranges ecoregion is bounded on the south and southeast by the Nas Ranges and Skeena Mountains ecoregions, on the north and east by the Yukon Stikine Highlands ecoregion and on the west by the Pacific Ocean. It is part of the Coast and Mountains eco-province which forms part of the Humid Maritime and Highlands ecodivision. Hoodoo Mountain is part of the Stikine sub-province of the NCVP. This sub-province, confined to the Stikine region of northwestern British Columbia, includes three other volcanic centers, Heart Peaks, Level Mountain, and Mount Edziza. All four volcanic centers differ petrologically and or volumetrically from the rest of the NCVP. Heart Peaks, Level Mountain and Mount Edziza are the largest NCVP centers by volume, with the latter two having experienced volcanism for a much longer time span than any other NCVP center. Hudu Mountain, Level Mountain and Mount Edziza are the only NCVP centers that contain volcanic rocks of both mafic and intermediate to felsic composition. The highest of the four complexes is Mount Edziza at 2,786 meters, 9,140 feet, followed by Level Mountain at 2,164 meters, 7,100 feet, Heart Peaks at 2,012 meters, 6,601 feet, and Hoodoo Mountain at 1,850 meters, 6,070 feet. Hudu Mountain is one of 10 volcanoes composing the Iskut Volcanic Field. This is a group of NCVP volcanoes scattered along the Iskut River and its main tributaries. They consist of both subaerial and glacial volcanic deposits, the latter of which are in the form of pillow lavas, tough breccias and hyaloclasty. All of these volcanoes were active in the last 150,000 years, with the latest eruption having occurred from the volcano about 150 years ago. The remaining Iskut volcanoes are Cinder Mountain, Little Bear Mountain and the Cone Glacier, Iskut Canyon, Second Canyon, Snippaker Creek, King Creek and Tom Mackay Creek Cones. Like other volcanoes in the NCVP, Hoodoo Mountain has its origins in rifting of the North American plate caused by crustal extension. This has resulted from the Pacific plate sliding northward along the Queen Charlotte Fault, on its way to the Aleutian subduction zone in Alaska. As the continental crust stretches, the near-surface rocks fracture along steeply dipping faults parallel to the rift. 
Several dormant volcanoes in the NCVP are potentially active, with Hudu Mountain being one of many having erupted in the last 10,000 years. Zach's Cone, which last erupted about 240 years ago, is the southernmost NCVP volcano while Prindle Volcano in easternmost central Alaska, which last erupted in the Pleistocene, is generally considered the northernmost. Structure Hudu Mountain is one of the largest peralkaline volcanoes in the NCVP. It is a stratovolcano composed primarily of peralkaline phonolite and trachyte lava flows and hyaloclastites, although some pyroclastic rocks are also present. Its peralkalinity is unique among other volcanoes in the Iskut volcanic field, which range in composition from alkali basalt to Hawaii. Hudu has also been designated as a subglacial volcano due to much of the mountain having formed subglacially in the last 85,000 years. Its involvement with glaciation has resulted in several interactions with glacial ice as much as 2 kilometers, 1.2 miles, thick, affording multiple examples of glacial volcanic processes. This includes the formation of ice marginal lava flows and the interlayering of glacial till with volcanic deposits. Hudu Mountain's constant struggle with surrounding and overlying ice is attested by its nearly flat summit, which attains an elevation of 1,850 meters, 6,070 feet. Lava flows from Hudu Mountain partially bury Little Bear Mountain, a much smaller and older basaltic volcano immediately to the north. Both volcanoes are underlain by plutonic rocks and metamorphosed volcanic and sedimentary rocks of Stakenya. These basement rocks are of Paleozoic-Mesozoic age, with pyroxene cyanide composing a significant portion of the Mesozoic basement. Intruding the basement rocks are 1.8 million-year-old Trachyon desert dikes, which represent the earliest known representation of quaternary magmatism in the Iskut region. Hudu Mountain has been described as one of the most magnificent and interesting mountains in northern British Columbia. This is because it has a different lithological and topographical structure than most glaciated mountains in the Canadian Cordillera. In contrast to its rugged counterparts, Hudu is symmetrical and circular in form. It has a basal diameter of around 6 km, 3.7 miles, a volume of 17.3 cubic kilometers, 4.2 cubic miles, and a topographic prominence of 900 meters, 3,000 feet, making it the smallest of the four volcanoes composing the Stikine subprovince. Hudu's, pillar-like rock formations after which the volcano is named, are as much as 150 meters, 490 feet, and height and give the mountain a unique appearance. In 1919, a landslide removed lava rock from a 580 meter wide, 1,900 foot, section on the western side of Hudu Mountain. Two sets of prominent cliffs partially circumscribe Hudu Mountain, which give the volcano a discontinuous, step-like topographic profile. The lower set of cliffs delimit the base of the volcano except for its southeastern margin where they have been partially overrun by younger lava flows. These cliffs form a broad bench at an elevation of approximately 1,300 meters, 4,300 feet, and are 100 to 200 meters, 330 to 660 feet, high. The upper set of cliffs surround the summit and are between 50 and 100 meters, 160 and 330 feet, high. Both sets of cliffs formed as a result of lava erupting in a glaciated environment. As lava traveled down slope, the lava came into contact with glacial ice that completely surrounded Hudu Mountain and cooled very quickly, forming a barrier around the entire volcano. This is demonstrated by the glassy texture of the lava and columnar joining, which indicate fairly quick cooling of an erupted lava flow. The lava cooled, pooled and as the glacial ice receded, it left behind massive lava cliffs. Subfeatures the south-central side of Hudu Mountain contains a large depression called Long Valley. This feature, having formed by glacial erosion, contains a series of domes with adjacent lava spines. Pointer Ridge on the north-central side of Hudu Mountain consists of pyroclastic rocks that form a 200-meter thick, 660-foot, stratigraphic unit. The wall, a more than 200-meter high, 660-foot, cliff at the western base of Hudu Mountain, forms the front of an ice marginal lava flow that displays columnar joining. The monument on the southwestern side of Hudu Mountain is a vertical rock column that reaches more than 100 meters, 330 feet, in height. It is the eroded remains of a volcanic vent that was fed by a west trending dike. Horn Ridge, a 20 meter high, 66 foot, ridge on the north side of Hudu Mountain, consists of highly vesicular lava flows that are locally heavily jointed. The northeastern side of Hudu Mountain contains a J-shaped cliff called the Hook. Like the wall to the southwest, the hook is the front of an ice marginal lava flow. 
Slide Canyon consists of a large chasm that cuts deeply into the southwestern side of Hoodoo Mountain. It is intruded by several dikes, including the one that fed the monument. Pumice Point on the northwestern side of Hoodoo Mountain contains highly vesicular, labelita block-sized fragments of woody pumice up to 15 cm long. Extending from the northwestern side of Hoodoo Mountain is the Northwest Flow, a lava flow with well-preserved levees. Lava channels up to 20 meters, 66 feet, wide occur throughout the flow. The Southwest Flow is a large lava flow on the southwestern side of Hoodoo Mountain that appears to have issued from a poorly formed cinder cone. Volcanic History Hoodoo Mountain has experienced at least six eruptive periods over the last 85,000 years. This includes three periods involving volcano ice interaction and three periods with no apparent ice involvement. They were marked by pyroclastic eruptions, lava flows and subglacial eruptions of peralkaline magmas. These magmas were phonolytic and trachytic in composition, having possibly evolved from differentiation of alkali basaltic melts in the midcrust. Several tephra layers in the Bob Quinn Lake, Dease Lake and Finley River areas of northern British Columbia may have originated from Hoodoo Mountain. Eruptive Periods the first eruptive period 85,000 years ago produced massive subglacial lava flows and associated hyaloclastite breccia. These volcanic deposits are mainly exposed on the southwestern and northwestern flanks where they are about 500 to 1,000 meters, 1,600 to 3,300 feet thick. The lava flows display small diameter columnar joints and are aphanitic in nature with low vesicularity. It remains unclear whether or not the subglacial eruptions during this period completely melted the overlying ice. Glacial till underlying the southwestern flank indicates that the area had already experienced past glaciations before the onset of volcanic activity. Subaerial eruptions from near the summit took place during the second eruptive period 80,000 years ago. Lava traveled downslope from an elevation of roughly 1,350 meters, 4,430 feet, but was then confined by thick glacial ice at an elevation of about 700 meters, 2,300 feet. Here, the lava cooled and pulled to create the lower discontinuous set of cliffs around the entire base of Hoodoo Mountain. These ice marginal lava flows vary from about 30 meters, 98 feet, to more than 200 meters, 660 feet, thick and often contain horizontally oriented columnar joints, indicative of a vertical cooling surface. The wall at the western base of Hoodoo Mountain formed during this eruptive period. Subsequent glacial movements over these flows created north-south trending striations that are consistent with current movements of the Hoodoo and Twin Glaciers. However, both of these valley glaciers are now roughly 500 meters, 1,600 feet, below the striations due to their ongoing glacial retreat. After the regional ice had disappeared from lower elevations, subaerial explosive eruptions of the third eruptive period took place between 80,000 to 54,000 years ago. This explosivity generated pyroclastic flows on the northern flank where they deposited a roughly 100 meter thick, 330 foot, sequence of pyroclastic material. The sequence comprises non-welded lapilli tuff within a matrix of yellow to light green ash, as well as three highly welded lenses up to about 5 meters, 16 feet thick. Volcanic glass of phonolytic or trachytic composition occurs within the sequence. A 10 meter thick, 33-foot subaerial lava flow traveled down the north-central and northeast flanks of Hoodoo Mountain during the latter stages of this eruptive period. It directly overlays the pyroclastic sequence and contains abundant fresh and devitrified glass. The fourth eruptive period 54,000 years ago produced a subaerially erupted sequence of up to five stack lava flows on the north-central and southwestern flanks. Individual flows vary from 10 to 30 meters, 33 to 98 feet, thick and are separated by 1 to 10 meters, 3.3 to 32.8 feet, of lava breccia, giving the sequence a total thickness of around 200 meters, 660 feet. The lava flows do not appear to have interacted with glacial ice, suggesting that at least the upper flanks of Hoodoo Mountain were ice-free at the time of their eruption. Columnar joints more than 1 meter, 3.3 feet, that characterize these flows. After a period of eruption showing no apparent evidence for ice interaction, Subglacial eruptions resumed between 54,000 to 30,000 years ago, signaling the buildup of regional ice levels. This fifth eruptive period occurred in two stages. The first stage took place between 54,000 to 40,000 years ago when the overriding glacial ice was possibly more than 2 kilometers, 1.2 miles, thick. Isolated vents produced a wide variety of volcanic deposits extensively distributed around the entire summit region. 
This includes subglacially erupted lava lobes and domes, as well as ice chilled breccia and hyaloclasty, which form a 400 meter thick, 1,300 foot, volcanic unit. The second stage between 40,000 to 30,000 years ago was characterized by fissure fed eruptions beneath relatively thin ice cover. These eruptions produced a roughly 30 to 50 meter thick, 98 to 164 foot, unit of lava flows, lava lobes and breccia on the north central, northwestern and western flanks of Hoodoo Mountain. The sixth and final eruptive period began 10,000 to 9,000 years ago with the eruption of 5 to 10 meter thick, 16 to 33 foot, phonolytic lava flows from vents near the summit. They traveled down the north central, northwestern, southeastern and southwestern flanks of Hoodoo Mountain without encountering any glacial ice, suggesting that the flows were erupted subarily after the regional ice had disappeared from lower elevations. Lava flows on the north-central flank display radially oriented cooling joints. The northwest flow traveled about 3 kilometers, 1.9 miles, downslope and partially covers cliffs at the base of Hoodoo Mountain. Lava flows on the southeastern flank drape down 50 meter high, 160 foot, cliffs and extend into the Twin Glacier Valley where they spread out into a broad terminal lobe. The southwest flow traveled about 3 kilometers, 1.9 miles, downslope to near the Hoodoo River. These lava flows are considered by the Smithsonian Institution's Global Volcanism Program to have been erupted in 7050 BCE. However, the southwest flow may be much younger as age estimates of more than 180 years have been obtained from tree ring dating on living trees. This lava flow has also not undergone erosion and it still attains its original characteristics even though it is very easily broken. These observations have been taken to indicate a very recent origin, possibly not more than a few hundred years old. Tephra Layers Hoodoo Mountain is a possible source for 25 to 10 mm thick, 0.20 to 0.39 inch, tephra layers in the Dease Lake and Finley River areas. They both range in composition from phonolytic to trachytic and are high in iron 2 oxide, indicating that the two Finley tephrae were likely extruded from a single volcanic center. Radiocarbon dating of terrestrial plant macrofossils directly overlying the youngest tephra layer suggests an early Holocene age for this volcanic material. The glass composition of the tephras is similar to the average whole rock chemistry of the phonolytic lava flows produced during the final eruptive period at Hoodoo Mountain. However, this eruptive period is not known to have produced any pyroclastic deposits or tephras. Therefore other possible sources have been considered, including Level Mountain, Heart Peaks and the Mount Edziza Volcanic Complex. A 12 mm thick, 0.47 inch, tephra layer of unknown origin occurs in sediments at Bob Quinn Lake 60 km, 37 miles, northeast of Hoodoo Mountain. It is phonolytic in composition, differing from the Finley tephrase and having about 2% less silicon dioxide, 1.5% more aluminum oxide and more titanium dioxide, calcium oxide and magnesium oxide. The aerial distribution of this tephra is poorly constrained but it may extend further to the east. Hoodoo Mountain is a possible source of this tephra due to its location along the trajectory of any ash plume from this volcano. The exact age of this early Holocene tephra layer is unknown but its stratigraphic position suggests that it is about 7,000 to 8,000 calendar years old. No volcanic deposits of this age are known at Hoodoo Mountain but there may be younger deposits that are completely covered by the summit ice cap. Monitoring and Volcanic Hazards Like other volcanoes in the NCVP, Hoodoo Mountain is not monitored closely enough by the GSC to ascertain its activity level. The Canadian National Seismograph Network has been established to monitor earthquakes throughout Canada, but it is too far away to provide an accurate indication of activity under the mountain. The seismograph network may sense an increase in seismic activity if Hoodoo Mountain becomes highly restless, but this may only provide a warning for a large eruption. The system might detect activity only once the volcano has started erupting. If Hoodoo Mountain were to erupt, mechanisms exist to orchestrate relief efforts. The Interagency Volcanic Event Notification Plan was created to outline the notification procedure of some of the main agencies that would respond to an erupting volcano in Canada, an eruption close to the Canada-United States border or any eruption that would affect Canada. Hoodoo Mountain is a dormant but potentially active volcano, having experienced at least eight seismic events since 1985. Hazards stemming from renewed volcanism are lava flows and flooding, as well as fallout from explosive eruptions. Lava flows generated by effusive eruptions could dam the Iskut River and pose a major hazard to mining operations upstream due to rising waters. 
A major eruption could also significantly melt the summit ice cap or the adjacent glaciers to produce large-scale flooding of the Iskut River and the lower Stikine River. Such flooding could significantly disrupt the Stikine River salmon fishery, although it would not be as disruptive to mining operations. A Joko Laup is unlikely due to the lack of a caldera to fill with meltwater. Explosive eruptions could produce significant pyroclastic fall to disrupt local mining operations, with airborne ash potentially disrupting air traffic to and from the mining camps. Air traffic between Canada, Alaska and Asia would be disrupted by high eruption columns due to the presence of major airways near the volcano. Human history. Geological studies. The volcanic deposits at Hudu Mountain were briefly described in 1948 by F. A. Kerr of the Geological Survey of Canada GSC, while studying the regional geology along the southern part of the Iskut River. According to Kerr, the volcano erupted in the center of an old valley that must have drained to the Iskut about three miles above the present Hudu River successive outflows from the volcano repeatedly disrupted the drainage, so that the flanking streams and glaciers have had a difficult struggle to maintain their channels. An ice-filled crater was speculated by Kerr to underlie the summit ice cap. In 1991, Canadian volcanologist Jack Souther provided a short account of the geomorphology of Hudu Mountain as well as some age constraints from preliminary KR dating. Hudu's relatively flat-topped geomorphology led Souther to refer to it as a Tuya, even though its summit lacks a capping sequence of subaerial lavas typical of Tuyas. It does, however, coincide with Souther's original use of the term Tuya in that its overall geomorphology has been strongly influenced by interaction between ice and lava. The first detailed summary of the Quaternary Stratigraphy and Petrology of Hudu Mountain was compiled in 1997 by American geologist Ben Edwards who produced a detailed geologic map of the volcano. An expedition consisting of university, GSC and industry scientists was financed in 1997 to assess the nature and magnitude of hazards posed by Hudu Mountain. This included mapping of the shape of the summit ice cap using ground-penetrating radar and ice radar, as well as the production of a preliminary hazard assessment for the Iskut area. Analysis of data indicated the absence of a caldera or large crater beneath the ice cap. Instead, the underlying topography was shown to be characteristic of an inverted and very shallow saucer. The use of radars to penetrate the ice cap and to assess the subglacial topography proved to be instrumental for studying other glaciated volcanoes in the American Cordillera and elsewhere. Personnel involved in the 1997 expedition were Catherine Hickson and Mark Stashuk of the GSC, Jim Nichols of the University of Calgary, Jeff Schmoke and Guy Cross of Golder Associates, Alison Rust, Ben Edwards and Kelly Russell of the University of British Columbia, and Trevor Page of Lancaster University. By 2002, Hudu Mountain was no longer the least studied volcano of the Stikine subprovince. Mining The Hudu Mountain area contains several large mining camps within the floodplain of the Iskut River. Prospecting in Bronson Creek commenced as early as 1907, during which time several mining claims had been staked. This was followed by drifting, trenching and stripping of several gold-bearing veins between 1910 and 1920. A drilling program conducted by the Hudson Bay Mining and Smelting Company from 1954 to 1960 identified copper prospects. In 1964, Kaminko optioned claims from Jody Explorations and the Tuxi Mining Company. A drilling program to test copper mineralization on the Red Bluff claim was completed by Kaminko in 1965. Texas Gulf Sulphur examined the area for its copper and base metal content from 1973 to 1974. Exploration of the pickaxe vein by Skyline Gold began in 1980 to define its gold potential. This was followed by the discovery of the Discovery Vein in 1981, which led to further drilling and the discovery of a high-grade gold vein in 1982 that became known as the 16 Vein. Surveying, drilling and trenching was carried out by Skyline Gold, Placer Development and Anaconda Canada exploration between 1982 and 1988. The Johnny Mountain Mine commenced production in November 1988 after having been engaged in pre-production since January of that year. This small underground mine operated until August 1990 when high operating costs and low gold prices forced it to shut down. This was followed by closure of the ore mill in September of that year. The mine remained closed until 1993 when further mining and milling took place. A total of 196,358 tons of ore was mined from 1988 to 1993, from which 1,008,109 kilograms, 2,222,500 pounds, of copper, 4,348,814 grams, 
153,399.9 ounces, of silver and 2,815,393 grams, 99,310.1 ounces, of gold was recovered. Intermittent mineral exploration has taken place at the Johnny Mountain Mine since its closure in 1993. In 1982, Kaminko Stake 2 mining claims over their Red Bluff property and adjacent ground near the junction of the Craig and Iskut rivers. A geochemical survey consisting of 26 rock and 36 soil samples was completed by Kaminko in 1985. Exploration work from 1986 to 1987 included geochemical soil surveys, trenching and 15,494 meters 50, feet, of diamond drilling in 86 holes. The SNP mine began as an underground exploration program in March 1988, with three levels having been established 180 meters, 590 feet, 300 meters, 980 feet, and 340 meters, 1,120 feet, underground. About 41,000 meters, 135,000 feet, of underground diamond drilling and 4,200 meters, 13,800 feet, of underground work was completed between August 1988 and October 1989 with 63,700 meters, 209,000 feet, of surface and underground diamond drilling having been completed by mid-1990. The SNP mine, owned jointly by Kaminko and Prime Resources, began production in January 1991. An airstrip was used continuously to ship or concentrate from the mine until May 1999 when all mining operations ceased. Production throughout the mine's lifespan amounted to 249,276 kilograms, 549,560 pounds, of copper, 32,093,000 grams, 1,132,000 ounces, of gold and 12,183,000 grams, 429,700 ounces, of silver from 1.2 million tons of ore mine. Mineral exploration has occurred at the SNP mine intermittently since its closure in 1999. Accessibility Hoodoo Mountain is in a remote location with no established road access. The closest point accessible by road is Bob Quinn Lake about 60 kilometers, 37 miles, northeast of Hoodoo Mountain along the Stuart Cassier Highway. From there the mountain can be reached by charter helicopter or by trekking across mountainous terrain with extreme difficulty. Alternatively, fixed-wing aircraft landings can be made on the Bronson Creek runway immediately south of Hoodoo Mountain. The mountain can also be approached from the Alaskan community of Wrangell by boating up the Stikine and Iskut rivers.